My name is Marcus Ramberg, and you might know me from such pro projects as uh, Catalyst and Malicious. I've been an open source hacker and contributor for the past 15 years or so. I even have a blog. I've always dabbled in operations, but recently I've, I've taken a full-time ops position here at the University of Oslo, managing about 2,000 domains, running various web pages and applications for university on a diverse platform spanning about 150 servers. For the last five years before I uh, started at the university, I ran a small startup called Nordocker. We were often working geographically separated, and to keep track of the teamwork, we used Slack. Uh, Slack is a very nice real-time chat system. One of the features that we used a lot were hooks into the other systems like GitHub and our continuous web build system. This allowed us to work in public. So that, having, so that everyone knew what was going on without having too, too much time wasted on meetings and coordination. Uh, at Nordocker, I was the only ops person, but for the last six months, I've been working in an operations team, and the need to coordinate on operations is even greater than before. UO primarily uses Jabber as their real-time chat system, which works in a similar way to Slack. But I've missed a lot of the automation, so I started looking into setting up a channel bot to implement some of the similar things that we have in Norrocker. Um, I looked into both Hubot, which I've used before, and Lita. And even, but even though I'm familiar with both Ruby and JavaScript, I found them cumbersome to customize to our environment. However, I already had some experience writing IRC clients because I recently helped to build Convos convos.by, a WebSocket-based persistent IRC client. I've also got the wasted youth running IRC offer bots on Fnet. Uh, I figured that writing a bot framework wasn't so different from writing a chat client. Convos is built using the malicious framework, which I help maintain, so it seemed like a natural choice for my bot framework as well. Malicious is a wonderful toolkit and probably the main reason why I still develop in Pro 5. It's a complete MVC framework, uh, but it's also a real-time I.O. loop, as well as a fully featured HTTP stack with tools like JSON pointers, an async user agent, and a full XML DOM parser. It integrates with the Anevent Pro modules through libEV, which makes it easy to hook various communication protocols straight into the I.O. loop. If you didn't understand of that, suffice to say, it's a lot like Node.js, but it has all the parties included in the box. This helps remedy the paradox of choice. You already have a same default. So I decided to write a simple bot framework, but because I'm pretty lazy, I built it as a thin layer on top of malicious light. I'm reusing the entire infrastructure, including the, the daemon and the HTTP serving. This makes it trivial to create things like webhooks or custom HTTP requests, as well as processing of backend responses. I'm using the routing system from Ulysses for chat commands as well, by simply rewriting the messages to use slashes instead of spaces before doing the root dispatch. This means that Marvin has a powerful mechanism for matching channel messages. You can use the same placeholders as you do in traditional web routes. In addition, I've created an adapter system to allow Marvin to talk, simply talk to external chat systems. For initial release, we support IRC and XMPP, but it's fairly trivial to write your own. The adapters use the event emitter mechanism in Mojo. This makes them loosely coupled to the rest of the bot. I've also re I'm also reusing the plugin system from Malicious, which makes it trivial to extend Marvin with your own commands and hooks. We're going to look a little bit into building your own plugins a little later. Of course, the first thing I had to do was to find a name for my new project. Seeing as I'm a hoppy fraud, fraud who really knows where my towel is, there was only ever going to be one bot for me. Marvin, the depressed android from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Somehow, a depressive bot seems to go well with operations, just like that bottle of scotch in your drawer. The first real plugin that I wrote integrates with Request Tracker, our trouble ticketing system. It polls our main queue and announces new tickets as soon as they come in. 
I'm actually planning on redoing this part using a script that tri triggers a web webhook on ticket creation to reduce system consumption and reduce delays. More about this later. I've also added the exclaim take command. The way it works in our team, one ticket has the main responsibility for handling new tickets for a week at a time, but sometimes our core members have better qualifications for handling a ticket. And the take commands let us track that in public, as well as keeping the history in RT. When you name a bot Marvin, you can't just let it come up with any boring response. So whenever you take a ticket, Marvin responds with something like, I think you ought to know I'm feeling very de depressed. Or, yes, master, I live to serve you. Well, I don't actually live. All my ever-growing to-do is making this into a response system so you can customize the generic responses to add to your own unique personality to your bots. UEO has recently implemented Sabix as their main monitoring tool, and we also get alarms posted directly into Jabber. This is useful, but it can be noisy when we are trying to do actual maintenance. So I've implemented a Sabix plugin to create server maintenance windows as well. You just do like exclaim don't time sapod five minutes disk swap and it will squelch any alerts for the sapod for the next five minutes and log disk swap to Sabix. Of course, you can't escape the bitter ack from Marvin. Even though there are CPAN modules for both RT and Sabix, I found it trivial to just implement these using the REST APIs directly. If you prefer, you can just as easily, easily use CPAN, any CPAN modules in your plugins though. I just find it's important to find a balance between the cost of external modules versus the cost of implementing the functionality directly. The balance depends on the complexity of the task. If, if you have to integrate a SOAP API, I recommend running away. I mean, I recommend using a module. Uh, for our use case, it's great that Jabber is authenticated because I can trust that the username from your Jabber server is the authenticated in our central LDAP directory. That means that no one can spoof a user and run the command as someone else. Of course, this is not the case for IRC adapter, so I eventually plan on implementing an inbot authentication mechanism as well. For our Git hosting, we use Atlassian Stash. I've written a simple Stash plugin, which uh, accepts a list of Git repos and maps them to rooms. This is using the built-in malicious web server to accept webhook calls directly from a Stash plugin. It means that whenever someone commits something, it was a post with a JSON body directly to the IRC bot. And the bot announces the uh, commit to the channel. Webhooks aren't supported directly in Stash, but Atlassian provides a free plugin that you can use with Stash. Using webhooks is very simple. Because of the push models, it means your alerts are instant. It's very common for ops teams to depend on cron jobs that pull on a service on a regular interval, but this can make the services very frustrating to work with. All the delays just add up, and, and you have to wait for, uh, ever for your changes to, to surface. As long as you restrict access on IP level, the simplicity of a webhook means that it's a fairly secure way to trigger hooks without the delays. In fact, I'm currently working on a variant of this pattern to trigger Ansible jobs to our server infrastructure via the Rundeck API. This means that we can trigger deployments directly from the chat room in response to RT tickets. Eventually, I also want to de allow developers to use this to, to deploy t to test their, their systems from development to test as well. Let's look at this work as an example for you can write your own integration into Marvin. As I mentioned earlier, we are using the same uh, malicious plugin mechanism as the main malicious framework itself. So the base template, tem tem template for a, a plugin is exactly the same. Even though you can notice I've been using the experimental signatures here, that's up to you, really. Uh, so a webhook uses the normal uh, malicious routes that uh, uh, any normal MoYo app would use, uh, and emit messages from the adapter to send to the designated rooms. If you want to handle a public command, 
you use a public route. Private routes would trigger messages directly to the bot in the rooms, as well as private messages. Of course, at our channel bot can't be all work and no play, or it would be a pretty dull boy. I haven't had time to add animated GIF searches and cute kittens like the U-Bot people yet, but to give a decent baseline, I've added a clever bot plugin to Marvin. Uh, this online AI talks to people on the internet and it learns to get better at pretending to be a human all the time. It recently scored 59.3% on a Turing test, and quite frankly, it can be a good company during lonely maintenance missions. My only real problem with the Cleverbot so far is that it seems to be a little bit too happy. If anyone can help me making it more depressed, I would be really thankful. Okay, so now that I've shown you some of the things that... ...you can do with uh, Marvin, it's time to look into installing it. Uh, from about next week, you will be able to install Marvin directly from CPAN, or you can just get the latest development version straight from GitHub. CPAN M accepts GitHub URLs as well, so if you're not, and if you're not using CPAN M, M to install your Pro modules, you're probably doing it wrong. After that, you generate your own bot using the mojo generate command. Uh, with the mojo generate Marvin and then the nick of your bot. It will automatically create a folder with uh, the name of your bot, as well as a default marvin.conf and a marvin.pl file for you to extend. As well as a lib folder if you want to put plugins directly into to your bot directory. If you want Marvin to log to a file, just add the log folder as well, just the same as with for malicious. Uh, I recommend using a .development file to track your local config so that you can uh, keep the, the standard config file as a reference for um, possible options that you can use. Uh, you can have as many adapters as you like running in the IO loop. If you don't want to save your password to the config file, you can get Marvin. Now you can get Marvin to prompt you for it on the startup like I'm illustrating here. So if you just add up that dash password, password anywhere in your config file, it will ask you for it on startup. Finally, you can just start a bot by running Marvin Daemon. It accepts the same arguments as a normal Moyo app, so you can add a listens, for instance, to, add, to listen to a different port or address. At this point, if you've done it right, Marvin should be connecting to your chat server. While debugging, it can be useful to know that all the normal Mojo Env debugging tricks work, like Mojo underscore agent underscore debug and Mojo underscore server underscore debug, as well as Mojo IRC debug if you're using the Mojo IRC adapter. As you can tell from this presentation, there's still a lot of work to be done from on Marvin. However, I believe I've now reached a level where it's useful for people to to this effect, I'm releasing the 0.1 version of Marvin early next week. If you're impatient, you can already check it out from my Git URL. I figured I'd, I'd show you a simple uh, example of how Marvin works right now. This is our operation <laughs> channel. So you can see here that we have uh, some alerts from Sabix product production uh, about time zones. And uh, on the bottom there, I've been getting a, a new RT ticket. Dear friend in Christ, that might be a spam, I'm not sure. Uh, and uh, Marvin, I, I've asked Marvin is, if he's ready to roll out. So whenever I, I send Marvin a command like he directly, that he doesn't recognize as something else, he will respond like... Uh, it always takes a little delay so that... Uh, You shouldn't be able to like tell that it's a bot. If it had responded uh, directly, it would like feel like less intuitive. Yeah. So uh, I figured I was going to show you uh, a little bit. Uh, let's see. 
For first, I wanted to open the main Marvin file that I'm running right now. So this is how a running Marvin bot looks. Uh, this is very similar to how a malicious light app looks, where it loads all the plugins that you're defining here as in order. Config is a config loader plugin, which is actually the same config loader plugin that malicious uses. And then console is console output, debug output. Cleverbot is the plugin that you just saw now, and RT and Sash I've talked about already. So I figured we can look a little bit at how the RT plugin works. It's a little, little bit more com complete example of. Uh, if I'm able to even type. Come on. RT. There you go. Yeah. So. As I mentioned, it's using the same uh, base as a normal malicious plugin. And uh, I'm defi defining my own user agent inside the plugin so that it will not affect the internal plugin if you're doing a blocking call or whatever. Even though I'm still, but I could just use app UA as well to use the same user agent as the main malicious thingy. As you can see, here are uh, some of the answers that it will pick when you're asking it to do something. This is going to be moved into a central uh, config file instead. And then uh, when you, whenever a malicious plugin is, is called, it's, set, it's calling register with the app object, which in this case will be an instance of Marvin, which is a subclass of the malicious main app. And uh, it gets the config from the app config as well. So you can see it sets up the take command and the poll command here. So the poll is doing a recurring uh, IO loop now for 20 seconds. And then it iterates over all of the queues that you have defined in, in your config file. And then fetches uh, the new tick 10, 10 newest tickets in that queue. Uh, so it just uses the malicious user agent to post that URL with the username and password that I've defined in my config file. And it uh, gets for hopefully a response. We split the response and then parse it. So we get back Unicode messages. Uh, we, we look for uh, the format of with thicket and the subject. You can you see I'm using um, regex uh, placeholders here to get the variables. And then if, uh, if I've already seen that ticket, I'm just skipping to the next one uh, and then tracking what, what tickets I've seen. Actually. I found it annoying that it was announcing all the tickets again when I was restarting the bot. So now it, on the first run, it will just skip all of the tickets that are in, in the request. So that because I'm always iterating and testing something, I don't want it to spam the channel with, with last 10 every time I restart. Uh, so it's going to log about notifying about this ticket, and then it, it just emits a message to the, to the, to the channel that that's defined in, in uh, the config file with a message similar to the one we saw in the channel about naming Christ. And that's all. And so for the setup command, I mentioned I've used the public uh, command. As you can see, uh, just in the, in the main app, you could just use public. But here I'm using the um, uh, full object-oriented style, because this is calling on the, on the Marvin object. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the main, just as in malicious light, uh, public is just mapped into app public directly in, in that uh, main file. Uh, so I'm defining here, matching anything in public that says take and a ticket number. And then I'm, I'm using that ticket number to uh, post to uh, the ticket mechanism and getting the ticket here and making sure that it exists. Uh, and then if the ticket is found, it will or if it, and it's not taken by anyone else, it will do a post to set you as a new owner. Uh, so you will get a message about Marvin giving you this ticket as well. And then eventually it will respond with one of those uh, random responses that I showed earlier. Or if it can't find anything, it will just like say, this will all end in tears. Yeah, so this is just simple code to create uh, relevant REST URLs and to parse RT tickets because they're not using JSON or XML, unfortunately. RT is a little bit old fashioned, so I had to do a little bit, jump a little bit of extra hoops to parse, parse the responses. Yeah, so I think that's my final thing and uh, 
I'm pretty much at the limit now. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Um, how, how stable is the API? Are you still developing and changing everything, or what are you? Um, I'm refer. I'm re uh, feeling that I'm I'm getting close before the release. I'm going. I have a couple of big changes that I'm going to do in the next one or two days, and then I'm going to call it more or less stable. Uh, but it's still going to be a 0 0.1 release, so I might refer uh, for the right to change some of the plugin details at a later point. Okay. Thank you.